What's up, YouTube? I'm back. Had a great weekend with my son. Um, before we get started, please do me a favor and like and subscribe. I've got a few subscribers over the week. I didn't think I would. I've got like nine or ten now. It's awesome. I want to get to 50 so I can start doing lives and talk to men uh, and women that have been affected by these family courts. I'd like to just put out a quick shout out to Kevin Sandals and his family. Um, tough loss. We're all still trying to figure it out. Anyway, let's talk about parental alienation. I've been promising this video for days, so here it is. I've been busy with my son. I try to give him all the time I can. I did some shorts while I was walking my dog this weekend. Um, my ex-wife is a classic alienator. She has alienated three boys from their fathers already. And, um, excuse me, two boys. And is working on a third, mine. So she's got three baby daddies. None of her kids have the same last name. None of her kids have a father except for my son. And I'm fighting tooth and nail just to be a father, which is crazy. So let's talk about, I'm only going to talk about five because these are the five that are really bothering me the most. There's 17 of them, but we're going to talk about five. Um, number one, poisonous message to the child about the targeted parent in which he or she is portrayed as unloving, unsafe, or unavailable. My ex-wife loves to tell my son that I'm a drug addict. She loves to tell my son that I don't love him. But she also tells my son that I'm trying to steal him in court. So it's kind of a mixed jumble message. <clears throat> I think as long as it's negative, she's getting what she wants out of it. Um, let's see. Number two, limiting contact and communication between the child and the targeted parent. Um, She's great at this. So she bought my son a phone. It was the only phone he had. The only way we could contact him. Um, I watched my mother try to call him. His grandmother try to call him. And when he didn't answer, I said, how come you're not answering your phone? Your grandma's calling me. He had to turn his phone on and unblock his grandma because his mother had blocked his grandma. And she blocks me. So that's why she got the phone, so she can control the narrative, she can control when I speak to my son, she can even stand over him and tell him what to say. Um, I'm going to go through these pretty quick, guys. I'm trying to work in the story, too, at the same time. Um, number three, erasing and replacing the targeted parent in the heart and mind of the child. I've already done receipts where she says she's dating another guy, and she's going to tell my son to tell me all about it. I just think it's ridiculous that she would even speak to my son about another man. It's fucking crazy. What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Talking to my son about another man. I don't talk to my son about no other woman. Like, what the fuck are you doing to our child? Number five, this is the biggest one for me. Undermining the authority of the targeted parent Taken together as parental alienation, these strategies conflict in a psychological distance between the child and the targeted parent. When one or more parent engages in these behaviors, they can be considered a toxic ex. Mine's doing all five. Not all children who are exposed to these parental alienation strategies succumb to the pressure and become alienated, some children are able to resist the pressure to choose one parent over the other. When they cannot resist the pressure, they are said to be alienated. That is, they reject a targeted parent without justification. Their relationship with a targeted parent is based on emotional manipulation, the favored parent rather than based on actual experiences with the targeted parent. So basically, the kid's going off of what he's been told, not what he's experiencing. Like, my son had a great week, but my ex-wife, when she gets him off the bus today, is going to tell him how bad it was, about how he didn't have a phone, about how I abused him, and all this crazy shit, when nobody abused anybody. The number one tactic is they will spoil the child, and then when you want to be just a normal parent, like a, a, a 9 or 10 year old shouldn't have an iPhone, iWatch, and iPods, like that's just normal shit. 
He shouldn't be on the internet all day. He shouldn't have full run to the access to the internet either. But when I bring these things up, she tells my son that that's, uh, that's, that's abuse. Anyway, guys, I got to get back to work. Um, please like and subscribe so I can get to 50. Shout out to Kevin Samuels and his people. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night.